Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! Chip chip a -roo, my little Santa's helpers. Oh, wrong animation. Oh, well, Santa, not Santa's helper, the dog. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Santa's my Santa's helpers, my, the elves, my little elves. I love it. Chip Chipperu, my little elves. My little inflatable Teddy Santas. There you go. How are y'all doing? I hope you're feeling all light because we're about to get our bleak on for the second time. Oh my god, she doubled up. <laughs> she doubled up on the puns. Yeah, we are bleakening all over again. I'm glad we separated the bleakening into two episodes because. I love this these episodes so much. I'm I'm excited to continue to talk about it. But before we do, do we have any business, Max? We do, and that's the good thing. When we do a two parter, we can take care of business and do it in both the, in both bleakening episodes. Two business bundles. Two, what? Yeah, we can we can use the bonus that the double episode uh -huh. to take care to split the business. Okay, let's do Not it. Not to be confused with Mr. Business, which is the right animation. The wrong? It's, huh? it's the right one. The right, the right show. We are on today. We are on. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We're, we're going <laughs> to just... <laughs> we're going to get into So much too. to say about that. Great, great Tina Pants. We have a new Patreon subscriber to thank. Rawr, rawr, rawr. And we, frim, 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 we have to burger pun their name. But we have a special request. Ooh. From Marla. Marla asked if we could make this burger vegan. I love it. And of I course said, we can. Uh, hell yeah, we can. So, Marla, moving forward, you will be known as the Marlagave Nectar Burger. <laughs> it's just bread and honey. Bread and honey. No, it's 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 a meatless burger. Okay, but it has like a I'd say like a agave nectar. I love uh, it. Like. Jelly or or of some sort. Marley. I love it. I would do like um a hot honey, like oh I like that. agave with chili peppers. Maybe you can do like a meatless fried chicken <gasps> with hot with hot uh, a, hot agave, with with quotes, ma honey. Uh, yeah, Marla Gave. I nectar. love it. So thank you so much, Marla Gave Nectar. That's your new name. <laughs> Sorry, uh, we're so excited to have you on Patreon and if you are listening to this, you specifically, I know you're. You, if you're pointing at yourself and saying me, yes, that's the correct person. If you would like to have your name burger punned right here on the show, just go to patreon.com slash Bob's credits, sign up for any tier. Your name will be burger pun on the show, but all the tiers have all sorts of fun things. We just did trivia this past weekend and it was our biggest turnout so far and we had so much fun. Live Zoom trivia. Yeah. Um, but you get all sorts of things. Lots of lots of bonus episodes there. Exactly. Go check it out. Um, but other than that, that's um, patreon.com slash Bob's credits. Yes. And uh, what else? Anything else before we get into the episode? Well, I want to know if you've come through on your request. Oh, for Bur Bob Hunter Max Pun? Yes. I have. Okay. We agreed last week that all of the puns had to be holiday themed. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so we're and you chose burger puns. Yes. You wanted to go classic. to yeah, to the classic. So we are going to play a little Bob Pun or Max Pun holiday special. Oh cute. Are you ready for your first pun? I'm so ready. The Santa Slaws is coming to town burger. Bobs. Yes. <sighs> Your next pun is, you cheddar watch out, you cheddar on rye burger. Max. Bob. <sighs> Your next pun is, it's the most wonderful time, time. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Of Gruyere. Max. Yes. Okay, we have to make that. We will. Time in Gruyere, you can do some like caramelized onions, make it a French onion soup burger. Sounds delicious to me. 
And your final pun is Carol of the Bell Peppers Burger. Max. Yes. Because it just didn't sound like yummy enough for Bob. Just to throw some some bell peppers. Mine are disgusting. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right. Would you like another holiday special? Perhaps a holiday side? The fun facts before the fun facts? Dish it, elf. (laughs) (laughs) Dish it. Rudolph. Twinkle toes. (laughs) Twinkle toes. Dish it, Miss Triple Xmas. That works, right? Yeah. Okay. I had a very interesting fun fact for you all today, but I decided to scrap it because we have to do a holiday-themed Bob's Burgers fun fact, right? So I'm I'm pushing the other one to next week. Here is what I want to talk about today. (laughs) When we first got into Bob's Burgers, I really wanted... A Bob's Burgers ornament. Every year, Max and I buy a new ornament for our Christmas tree that kind of signifies our year. And when I was searching, there are just not good Bob's Burgers ornaments, Christmas ornaments. There's just not a lot of selection. So I'm prepping you guys for this year, whether you hang it on your tree or have some holiday figurines around. If you want epic bob's burgers ornaments check out paul makes i know we've talked about him before but i want to specifically point out paul's holiday ornaments he has linda in her coat with her light up caroling necklace on he has the kids on the sleds he has bob and his sherpa corduroy winter coat i'm not Sure, if he takes requests, but here's what you have to do. Here's the lowdown. First of all, follow. So that's at Paul Makes. That's P-O-L. And last year, he released his holiday ornaments on his Etsy on November 2nd. I don't know when it will be this year, but you have to move fast. These are yes, all you, handmade. Yeah, he ta- yeah. sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. No, but yes, you know he better hand makes all of them. You know, they're ornament size, so they're small, and he puts a lot of care into them, a lot of detail. We've got a couple of them on our, on our tree that we were lucky enough to snag. But just follow him at P-O-L-M-A-K-E-S on Instagram, because I think that's where he announces what he's making and when he's going to post them. And yeah, you got to be quick, because they go quick on Etsy. Like, he announces they're being posted, and they go, and he only makes one of each, so... Oh, wow. Yeah, you got to try and be lucky. The other thing one. is... If you slide into his DMs and request like a commissioned piece, he may or may not be able to accommodate you. Yeah, we're not sure. We don't we're know not if he sure. Does that, but, we're not making extra but work for I him. I think it's always worth asking, I guess. Always worth asking because they are our favorite pieces on a tree. Which ones do we have? We have Jean sledding. Oh my God. And then we have uh, like a Linda's face in like with like her. Um, With Holly in her hair? Yeah. Yeah, not the light-up necklace one. No. But I really, 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 really need Bob in his winter coat. Yeah. And we also want to get the other kids sledding, too. I know, because then they can all be sledding together. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so a little bit different of a fun fact, but uh, I hope fun all the same. I'll also tack something on the end there. And uh, last week we gave... Just because of the episode was a Christmas episode, um, we put our Belcher Family Christmas products up. It's our Christmas in July in May sale. Yes. We'll toss up the ornaments we had while we're at it. Hell yes. What about the Dutch baby shirt? That's up there. Always. Yeah, but what about the discount code? Oh, we'll put it with the discount code. Woohoo! There you go. So our ornaments are up there now while this episode is out for the week. And uh, let's use the code uh, not the bleakin. <laughs> Just one word. Not for the a discount. Bleakin. Yeah. That'll work for ornaments, the Christmas hoodies and t-shirts, and the Dutch baby poster and t-shirts as well. Yes. All righty. That's bobscredits.com slash shop. 
You Shall we get episode? into this episode? Yes. Yeah. I mean, we've already been into this episode. Are you ready to get into the second half yes. of this episode? I sure am. Skylar, can we have the title and synopsis for season eight, episode seven, please? It's The Bleakening, part two. The kids set out on a snowy Christmas Eve to search for the Bleakin. Soon, they find a trail of feathers and a trap door there sure will lead them to the ornament-stealing monster. Soon, the whole family stumbles upon a rave cave, and that's just when the party gets started. This episode came out on December 10th, 2017. It was written by Kelvin Yu and directed by Chris Song. So as we mentioned, last week had different... Uh, Writer director, and the second half has these two on board. So great! I I think I love them equally. But before we go into that, I want to know how do you feel about the second half, and do you have any favorite parts? This second half is where the episode really picks up. Not that the first half wasn't great, but you know the kids out on their own, bleak and hunting. So good. And Linda's panic when she realizes the kids are out on their own bleak and hunting. She and is so funny. I know. She's and then <laughs> where they all end up, too, is just... It's it's so great that they end up at a rave. There's so much about it. We really got to break down the episode because I think it's like... It's that good. Immediate highlights are the songs are as good as they were in the first episode, but the the Bleakin reprise that they do yes. with Tina going, ha, 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 and that's the, like... The beat. Yeah, the, like the drum or the bass for the song. It's so <laughs> funny, so good. I love the kids' is like scared voices in it. Should we take a listen to um, Tina? Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Bleakin. Ha, ha, ha. It's gonna... gonna Wish that he was never born. We're coming for you, man. Hold on to your horns. It's so good. And I think brilliant that she's the beat or what I'm so not musical, whatever that's called. The rhythm, maybe? The rhythm. The rhythm. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> While we're talking about sounds, while you were setting up, I was just staring into space, and I heard... Sounds about right. Yeah. And I heard something I've never heard before. At the very beginning of this episode, you can just hear Gene eating his cookies. Yeah. I have never heard it before. You have to play it. Nom, 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 nom. It's not like that. He's like scared. Okay. It's scared eating. It's a very understated, brilliant performance. Everybody be quiet. Um. Um, 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 um. Now, are these Santa's cookies? Do I can't remember what he's eating. Them? Yeah, I guess so. I can't remember. I love that was walking last cooking. Week. Yeah, cookies. I, I, I can't remember that far. So, a few things I love about this: love the snow. It just is so cozy and beautifully drawn. I love Tina's ruler, and one of my favorite parts of this episode is when. The whole family decides, like, we're going to press forward. We're going to get mom's ornaments. This is not safe. And Tina's like, Dad, you better take this ruler as a weapon. Do you want me to show you how you use it? And she's like, you just go like this. And she slaps her dad in the face. And it, it's so funny to me. Like, yeah. it wouldn't be as funny if it came from Louise because that's so expected. But it's just one of the funniest moments to me. Also, I think this is the first episode we ever hear Gene whisper in. I was just blown away because I've never heard him talk so quietly it's in my stage, life. It's a stage whisper. It's a stage whisper. Gene can only stage whisper. <laughs> Let's just talk about like the big overarching plot. Okay. Linda's dream actually comes to fruition. I love that parallel in this episode. But it's really this community that she dreamed that people really needed more joy. The The wiggle room had just been closed down, and that's why she started this Christmas of her dreams thing in the first place. And she 
it actually comes to life. This is the party that everyone needs. It's just she accidentally called the police on them. Yeah. And her tree that she used to decorate her version was there as part of this party. Yeah. It's it's an alternate universe. Mm -hmm. And I think that this episode, I don't know, it just hit me really hard watching it this year. I don't want to spend too much time in the real world because it's so depressing, but with the drag queen bands and I don't have to list everything that's going on in this country, but watching this celebration of queerness in an unapologetic way, in a non-preachy way, um, just felt so good to me watching this. Yeah, it's it's very special, and that's what that's like the beauty of Bob's that world. What's the beauty of Bob's? Just just like that that pure joy yeah. that everyone feels and everyone is able to feel and take part in. You mean it's not like exclusive, except for Jimmy Pesto, of except, course. No, you're not allowed. You're not allowed. You mean it's it's a it's not it doesn't exclude anyone. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's on a primetime network. This mm-hmm. is you know. I also have to say, I love all the twinkly lights. Oh, how can you not? And Miss Triple x Miss. I love her performance. I'm obsessed with her costume. The, like, blue, let the, like, snow blue LED twinkly lights on her dress. And then my other favorite part of this episode is how long and how awkwardly Bob is, like, crouched over on the very very high speakers like he's there for five minutes just he kind of looks like the Grinch and it's so awkward and it's one of my favorite parts of the episode all right that's my bit and that also leads that moment leads to one of our favorite parts of the episode that we've been quoting all week in when, when Bob sees Marshmallow in the crowd and says his usual hi Marshmallow and Marshall just says mm mm not going to say hi, hi, baby. And she hi, baby. she was right to withhold. Um, and then we have hero Bob. I wrote in my notes, Bob's the hero. When he puts on the bleak and costume, his chest hair just makes the costume and leads the cops astray. Perfection. Ends up with Teddy. Oh, Teddy's, Teddy's Christmas is made because he gets to wedge into a tight space with bob wait maybe teddy's the hero because he's the one who saves bob because bob gets to hide in the costume yeah (sighs) teddy always the underrated hero i I agree a couple fun facts i'm gonna toss in here now not naturally but we're just talking about marshmallow and this is where we first learn how old marshmallow is or at least how old she tells people she is Mm. when uh linda says i thought you were just kids and Marshmallow says, I'm 23. Am I at the age now where 23 sounds like a kid? Yes, you are. (laughs) How's it feel? It feels weird. How's it feel? It feels weird. Hi, Hakeem. Hi, Hakeem, (laughs) our patron who's 22. (laughs) He's our baby. Yeah, he is. So sticking with Marshmallow, this is the last episode where Marshmallow is voiced by David Herman, who's mm-hmm. the guy who does Mr. Frond, a bunch of other characters. They still, I don't think, have recast Marshmallow's voice. So this is the last time we've seen Marshmallow, believe it or not. Are you on the kidding? Show, maybe, I mean, this is season eight. Yeah, maybe besides the end credits to the movie where mm-hmm. we see Marshmallow dancing. Mm-hmm. Maybe other visual appearances, but we haven't had a vocal appearance by Marshmallow. That makes me sad. Yeah, I'm hoping we get some soon. Me too, for sure. Miss Triple Xmas, mm-hmm. aka Cleavage to Beaver, Hysterical. as she mentions, that's her normal year-round name, is voiced by Todrick Hall. I think I know him because he's friends with Taylor Swift. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he in one of the videos recently? Yeah, yeah. but amazing creator. Like, an absolute amazing creator and apparently a great voice yeah Who and else? he's from texas oh isn't that cool i believe he's from like a small town in texas so skylar's from texas for those of you who are new here yep we mentioned this last week but it's still a fun voice 
uh, Art the Artists, who who ended up taking the Christmas tree as decorations, is voiced by Adam Driver. I already forgot. <laughs> it's a big last voice. Week. It's a big voice. Those are all the fun facts I have for the second part. Do you have anything else you want to say about the episode? Should we just kind of like start getting into the end credits because they're pretty, pretty big end credits? Let me just look at my notes and I'll just literally list things I love because I think it's worth it. Okay. And the, the end scene, which we will watch or listen to, is hysterical to me when Linda is goes from dancing at the rave to dancing at the apartment to saying that she's high and then crashing on the floor. Yeah. It is so funny to me. But there's also something really weird about it to me. Like, it, the animation looks different to me when Linda's dancing. She's, like, so long. It it almost reminds me of, like, Ramona. Um, Ramona the Brave animation. I don't know. I There's something in my childhood that's like, what is going on here? She just looks really different to me. I'll Does, grab some screenshots for our weekly carousel on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, go follow us on Instagram, by the way, at Bob's Credits, so you can see any references to this episode. Um, and if you can find something that whatever it reminded you of, did you put not, it side by side. Did, I have to look at it again. I'll look at it when we watch the last moment here, but the animation just jumps out at me. Yeah. Like, it is a little weird. It's almost like she's not flu as fluid as the dancing is normally here. I love it. It just, I'm like, Oh, that feels like a different animation style, but I might just be in my head. Absolutely love that. They have reconnected the top of the tree to their Christmas tree at the end. Linda's performance. We have a running joke that we hate Linda's. Some of Linda sounds like nah, 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 nah. can't do it. Hi, Harry. But another, another patron shout we out. We really are a family over there. Yeah. Hi, Harry. <laughs> Hi, baby. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. What was I saying? With Linda voice noises. Linda's performance, or John Roberts' performance, when they're in the car and she's panicking, and there he Bob's like, I think Tina got the street signs wrong, and she's like, No one in the family is good at directions. We're all stupid. <laughs> Where are my babies? Like I, and it goes back to the first part of the bleakening when she starts like gagging. When she realizes her baby's ornaments are gone. I, I just, I think this is a great performance by John Roberts. I, I, really I, good. I agree. I love when Linda is panicked about the kids and starts saying my babies and was <laughs> like, it's, you're right. It's such a good performance. <laughs> He's so great. Should we get into the end credits? Let's do it. Cause I just want to excuse to listen to uh, one of the best Bob songs ever. I agree with one of the best, I guess, ending scenes ever too. I think it's great. We were just Joy personified. About it. Okay, let's get into it. I love Christmas! Mom, did you sleep? She hasn't even sat down. Oh, somebody gave me a little something at the party. I feel amazing. Hold on, I gotta lie down for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she an angel when she sleeps? Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. I'm just gonna uh, feel her pulse. Yeah, she's okay. She's fine. Twinkly lights, twinkly lights. As we pull back and Bob has the last piece of dialogue, we get an establishing shot of the apartment and the restaurant all snowy and the decorations from their Christmas party are still up in the restaurant. And I melt because of what this show does to me. It's perfection. As we go into these end credits that are going to leave you dancing and happy and feeling great with a new reprise of Twinkly Lights with everyone singing. I'm so excited. We can Is hear... it Reprie? I think it's Reprie. I thought it was Reprise. Reprise. Re- reprise. Ah, uh, whatever. It doesn't repri- matter. Rep- reprie reprise. I don't think it's Reprie. A, tu- a tuna matata. <laughs> a, a, t- a tuna matata? <laughs> it's the music version of a tuna matata. Okay, got it. Um But yes, I love this version where we can clearly hear Linda singing. You can clearly hear Tina singing. You can clearly hear Louise and Jean, I think, at some point. Bob, too, right? Yeah, I think there's little parts where you can, if you're listening carefully, you can hear all of them singing. Um, And the first 
thing we get in the end credits or like the first images is we've got the split screen situation where the credits are on the right side and on the left side we have all sorts of like montage images and it starts with a close up of Miss Triple X Miss as it should yes followed by Linda singing and then we get into a close up of Tina's side profile with some Christmas lights in the mm-hmm. background I also have to say I think something that is really effective in these end credits is you just got to experience this amazing song and like visually Miss Triple Xmas is like a vision. Mm -hmm. And so when she pops up right at the beginning of the end credits, it's just like the serotonin in your brain is like, yes, we get to hear the song again. Yeah, it's great. And um, this brings me to a fun fact that's end credits related. So this sequence for part two. Uh Uh-huh is pretty much the same as when it was like the hour-long versions end credit sequence, but Uh it's shorter. Oh, no. So in the longer version, you get an appearance by Mr. Present from Linda's, like, dream. Oh. And uh, Mrs. Chang, who walks by Teddy with her dog on the street when he's in the Santa costume. I don't know if it's a time thing with Hulu or whatever, but... Since technically it's a two-parter, I think it would have been totally appropriate to leave that in. I guess so. I think so too, but I don't know why they have to do a shorter version. And it's a short, it's a slightly shorter version of Twinkly Lights too. Well, now I'm sad. Sorry, I didn't mean to ruin this very joyous end credit sequence for you. Um, Just thought we should know before we proceed. I'll live. Different colors and all different types. I mean, sure there are a lot of white lights, but you need a sword. There's Bob. Not well. He was running by in his bleak in costume, but I, I meant there's Bob's voice. Yeah. So, right after we get that close up of Tina's profile, mm-hmm. we get on the other side a profile of Miss Triple X Miss, followed by Tina, who kind of has like a dance solo, as you can really hear her singing. Would you like to? I I feel like I need to record this dance move. If you do, if you record it, we'll put it up in the carousel. Okay, just remind me to. Okay. Do I look good? Yeah. I, um. I mean, this dance move is, as the kids say, fire. Okay. Uh, I don't know if the kids say fire anymore, but she's wearing her cute little um sweater from the Nice Capades. A little reindeer sweater. And then when you mentioned there's Bob, we get a kind of like a front shot. Of Miss Triple X Miss singing and Bob as the Bleakin runs by in the background. It's he's so good. Followed by two close profile shots of Linda and Miss Triple X Miss singing to each other. They're belting it out, which is sweet because it was a rough beginning to their relationship. Yeah. So this is really, you know, it speaks to the theme of the song. Right. That we're all in this together. I mean, sure there are a lot of white lights, but you need a sword dance of lies to do it right. So we're still on that shot of Linda and Miss Triple X Miss singing to each other. And then what happens? And then Bob comes down upside down in his Bleakin costume. And then Teddy and his inflatable Santa fills in the screen from the bottom. And then we get Miss Triple Xmas, and there is all this like blue glitter background behind her, and it goes down as if like there's rain coming down the screen, and it completely fills up the screen. And then we get Linda in her cute little reindeer ears from her cute little party in part one singing. <laughs> Sorry, I had to let it play. It's just too good of a song. So after that shot of Linda dancing in her ears, we get another profile shot of Tina and Linda this time singing to each other with Gene dancing in the background. And maybe if you're going to do Tina's, I should do Gene's dance. Uh, 100%. I will coach you so that you can live up to this dance move, which 
We have seen Gene do a lot. I think this really is a very Gene dance move. When he walks into the rave cave and he says, oh my God, someone stole my dance move. I bet this was it. I can understand why someone would steal this dance move. In fact, I think I'm only going to do this dance move from now on. Sure. I love that. Minus pelvic thrust. I mean, pelvic thrust, thrust too. I need a pelvic thrust. You do? Yeah. Was okay. that a question or a period at the end of that? A period. Okay. Sure. Uh, exclamation point? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Just making sure. And then it's funny because we it's interesting. I wonder if in the longer version, no, I guess it's just interesting that we get Tina and Jean dancing. We don't get one of Louise. Now I feel robbed again. Yeah. But then we get a close-up of Miss Triple Xmas. And the camera pans out, and she is surrounded by all of our favorite characters from this episode. Can we name them? Uh, we sure can. Let me get the full shot here. I'll have a screenshot of this in our carousel, too. Sergeant Bosco. Love him in this episode. Teddy in his Santa outfit. I see a cowboy hat. No, that's just his hand from the Santa. Oh, I was <laughs> like, did I miss a sexy Santa cowboy there might have been one in that grave <laughs> i might need to be a sexy santa cowboy this christmas so then we have linda we have triple xmas we have bob as the bleakin we have edith edith is down there that's oh. harold harold we have trev trev we have jimmy pesto i guess he gets to make an appearance because of his toilet fudge we have marshmallow front and center we have Dalton, who is becoming one of my favorites because of who the voice actor is. Obsessed. John Early. Uh, John Early. And I think that's it. And Edith. Edith. Mort. That's Mort. Yeah, Mort's Aww. right there in the middle. And then we get the three kids in front. Cute. This is one of those like, oh my God, I love this town moments. It's very kind of similar to bad stuff happens in the bathroom. Glued, where's my Bob? Yeah. The end of that, which is this. Uh, season finale the like i love this quirky town yeah this is actually a great screen grab and it's up in our carousel right now because it's so good with the like like you said like the blue like twinkly light snow situation above them yeah do you want some twinkly lights lyrics and then we can just listen to these end credits and let it through? play out yeah i love it so in the end credits it's it's just starts at the chorus which is twinkly lights twinkly lights that's what makes christmas bright all different colors and all different types i mean sure there are a lot of white lights hold on I forgot to mention, that's my favorite line from this song. It's just, uh, I mean, sure, there are a lot of white lights. Yeah. It's so funny. But you need an assortment of lights to do it right. And then you get, and when they want to tell us that we're all wrong, I'm here to tell you that we're all lights. It's true. Uh, it's such a good message. Like, we need this to play on the radio. <laughs> I agree. It should be playing every every holiday season. Miss Triple X Miss should be making as much money as Mariah every Agreed. Christmas. And she needs to post a video every November 1st. Yeah. Bob should be doing that. That'd be great if they did that. Oh, my like, gosh. Like Mariah a does. Yeah. That'd be hilarious. Simon Chong, if you're listening, make that happen. Please. <laughs> the verse in the song that we hear when Miss Triple X Miss first comes out is just twinkly light shine. If one of them goes out, then none of them light. Or at least that's mm -hmm. how it used to be. <laughs> Now the LEDs work a little bit differently, but you know what I mean. I mean, this is what Bob's does. It's a catchy song. It's a brilliant song. It's a warm and fuzzy song, which is what holiday song should be. But then this humor is hysterical. It's it's brilliant. 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 Um, Can AI do that? No. Fuck AI. Excuse me. The reason we're talking about it is on our Patreon. We were talking about the writer strike and... There's a lot of stuff going on, why they're striking, but one of the things is to protect them from AI. So as Max said, fuck AI. Should we listen to these end credits and then we'll score them? Yes. Twinkly lights, twinkly lights, that's what makes Christmas bright. All different colors and all different types. Dance I mean, party over sure here. A lot of white light, but you need an assortment. So 
so good. Wow, we danced our asses off. I can already that tell. One. Yeah. That I'm going to need to help you with the jean dance move because you got to like p- stick your butt out and pop your back Yeah, a I might need to bit. put like a little pillow in my belly too because <laughs> he really uses his belly in that move. Yes. The only thing we didn't get was that at the very beginning of the credits, Linda does this amazing like arms out dance move. You might have to do that one too. You know what? We'll do them all. We'll do them all. We'll do them all. Come on, B. Come on, B. Should baby. we score them? Yes. We score on a scale of 1 to 10 H's at the end of Tina's uh. And now or I guess we should score it uh, 1 to 10 H's at the end of Tina's ha, 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 ha. The bleak end ha, 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 is coming. <laughs> the bleak end ha, 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 is coming. And just remind me, what we're missing from the original credits is... Then Teddy's neighbor walking with her dog. Yeah. And what else? Mr. Present makes an appearance from Linda's <sighs> dream. I'll try and find screenshots of it. Toss them in the carousel while we're at it. All right. Okay. Are you ready to score them? I'm ready. You want to do it at the same time? Sure. I feel like it's a giveaway. Let's see. One, two, three. Nine point nine. What? I'm just, I'm just kidding How with dare you. you. I'm just kidding with you. The only reason I say 9.9 is those two details that you told me about Yeah, makes it a 10. Although, not really. Even without those details, it's a 10. It's a 10. This, it's uh, a 10. I, I, I can't like not give it a 10 because of the song alone. Oh, yeah. And then you add Miss Triple Xmas and the blue twinkly lights. And then it's like Linda and her freaking... What are these? Reindeer. Reindeer ears. Antlers. The kids in their sweaters, Bob, and the... It's just amazing. It's so, it's so feel good. Uh, y- yeah. You can just put this on and just dance to it. And Skylar and I are going to dance to it like we just did while we listened to it. Yeah. Yep. I love it. We were wondering when we get to a 10 and leave it to the Christmas episode to get us to a 10 again. But you know what's next week? Uh, it's a big one. It's a big it's one. It's a big one. If you don't know... Yeah. Starts with an N... And ends with a T. And, and has an A in it. <laughs> and it's a three-letter name. <laughs> and uh, all we'll say is woof meow, woof meow. Very excited to do that one. <laughs> all right, y'all. All I have to say is follow us everywhere. <laughs> not, not in like real life. I don't, mean, don't stalk us. Yeah. Max is like very worried about, like irrationally worried about stalkers. I'm irrationally worried about a lot of things. As am I. Yeah. It's fair. Max is like, don't post where you are right now. I think that's a, I think that's a good rule of thumb. <laughs> I think it I is think too. I think we do that too. Just everyone listening, I think we do that too frequently. You can post <laughs> a, a photo of the concert you're at when you get home. You don't have to say, I'm here at this concert right now. And my home is completely <laughs> empty, empty if you want to go break in. I'm on vacation. And by the way, you know where my home is because I've taken so many photos and added the location. Well, you can just like look up anyone's address these days. <laughs> That's true. But oh. I digress. Go follow us on social media, Bob's Credits. And uh, leave us a review if you've enjoyed this. If you've been listening for a while and you haven't left us a review and you do enjoy us, we would it means the world to us. So leave us a review. It really does. What else, Skylar, before we get out of here? I'm just going to say stay sparkly. I love it. Shall we? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go.